has found over hundreds of books that are not being recognized by the academic world. And uh, joining us, well, our host here, um, Susan Carroll is going to be hosting the first book review sometime in January. Hi, well, thank you for having me. And uh, we'll, we hope to get many others on board. Um, the way this is going to work is that now, we can get one student from one college, another from another college, and create the book club, and then do it online. And the students will be able to, to take this uh, course for credit. And you want to get your input on that. Who wants to go first? Oh, that's excellent, because the students really are uh, uh, Heavy with the with the left leaning philosophies in uh, not just the academics but the literature too. So if they can get credit for reading some conservative literature, I think it'd be a good start. Definitely, they deserve right. it. They deserve to have to be able to hear two sides of the same coin. Right, and we know that when we recruit on college campuses, it's sometimes difficult to actually get enough students to be in, involved in one group or political groups, such as generally conservatives have been associated with the Republican Party. And to recruit enough students from one campus to form a group takes quite a bit of work. Mm -hmm. So if you get one from one campus and another from another campus, then they all come together online and and do the book group and, and write an essay and um, how Dorian, excuse me, how will they be coming together online? The scheduled time. Liberty Action Network has a uh, has partnered with YouTube. Hi YouTube, <laughs> great. <laughs> and we've also partnered with Google Plus. And so, and folks, I want to mention uh, we we haven't done this often, but you can call the show, okay? And uh, there's a way to do it. The next time I'm going to put it out, and so we're going to have callers call in and and talk to one of us. And that's the same way as how, how the book group is going to be done. And if you can't make it here, which most people can't, then you can go online, go to Google+, Plus, type up Liter Liter Liberty Action Network, or TV, and you will see all the other people in the book club, including yourself. You see their channel, and then you can chat with them. And there will be a moderator, which will be Susan, who did the first one who has volunteered to do that wonderful job. <laughs> um, so that's how the online uh, book club is also done. By the way, guys, I want to mention that, that we live stream to YouTube, Google Plus, and Facebook. So, so we're making use of the social media, yes. uh, which, which is how it's done today. Uh, the the uh, Old time was had it where you had to watch TV. Yeah, we've come a long way. We've come a long, long way. Right. However, yes. I want to just say to my Republican constituents is that because the rest of you are not making use of this technology, you are very far behind. And I notice my uh, liberal counterparts 
are making very good use of this technology. So, uh -huh. so uh, that's how this all comes together. And we know that when we do online courses for the, the college universities, that's how it's done the same way. Wow. Wow. And it's also done through Skype, too. Skype has, we have the same arrangement with Skype. Uh, well, I'll tell you, I think, I think some of the students will, will really enjoy something like this. I know my son is second year college, and uh, in his literature class, uh, the woman had a, uh, uh, a book there which uh, just totally trashed the, the white American guy. And all the guys did not appreciate this, this book that they had to read and give uh, opinions on and write essays on. And uh, it just, it's about time that uh, it was more balanced. That's right. That would and be fine if, yeah, I mean, if, if the professors would, you know, give the students an opportunity well, in order to, to um, look at both sides, whether it be liberal yeah. or conservative, but give them the option of give reading them the both, option. Of, Absolutely. Of, of reading both sides of the story and coming to their own adult conclusions. But we know that the colleges are more or less indoctrination. Phase two. That's right. We have to K right. through twelve, then you go through uh, Absolutely. phase two of indoctrination. It's not uh, it's not designed to uh, the mind and, and, and uh, you know explore. You know, it's just meant to control your thoughts. Right. Right. Absolutely. So, uh, by the way, folks, we have other guests sitting here. We're a uh, uh, pet. Friendly uh, group here. Yes. We have one whose name is Sweet Pea. Yeah. Is Shih Tzu. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyhow, uh, so these are some of the suggested. Uh, yes, some of the suggested books. And they're fiction. Most of them are, seem to be fiction. Right. Um, we're going to be talking about a few of them from this website. If you go to conservative, discover conservative fiction authors. You will come up with a website that has probably over about 100 books of um, different authors on here. And uh, one of my favorite ones, Tackle the 50-Foot Democrat. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> That's going to be an interesting one. Right. 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 And um, uh, I, I didn't read that one, but... Uh, I, I got the uh, clip notes for some of them here. Mira Pentiment, that's another good good one. Mm -hmm. uh, she wrote about the, uh, uh, I get the page here, something about one-fifth of the, uh, one-tenth of the, uh, uh, I forget the name of her title, but one of her books she writes about the liberals taking over one-tenth of the company economy. And what happens when you have liberal spending? <coughs> so, um, yeah. Yeah. So that's uh, actually I wouldn't say just liberal spending. I think they, conservatives have been pretty uh, spend happy too over the past uh, decade. So I right. That's true. It, it's the spending. It, it, you want to just take the point of spending. Right. To stop spending. That's right. So, so hold on. yeah, and I, I and I think I mean I do agree with you. Both of them have been spending, but what we are experiencing yeah. now is over the top. I mean, it's more than the other presidents combined. Yeah. The debt that has been incurred. I mean, our the, the future generation is going to have, you know, a very hard time trying to maintain any level of um, economic just security, even prosperity. Absolutely. So what's happening now is, uh, you know, it's very bad for the economy, for future generations, for businesses. It's by just design, bad. By design, it's yeah. I believe it. Taking away the economic independence Absolutely. that we've, that we've uh, thrived on in all the previous generations. And, and you know, it's so sad that it, the institutions of higher education, they focus on putting into the heads of their students that socialism works. And it has never worked any place it's been tried. Mm. And they're turning the right. war to capitalism and the free market. I mean, when we had done that demonstration downtown, what was it? Um, 
you know, when they were occupying the Occupy Wall Street. Occupy Wall Street. A bunch of young young people who have gone to some of these institutions of higher education. I mean, standing down there blocking businesses, causing all of the chaos that they cause. But that's what's being taught and I believe it it's even before they get yes. to college. It's even in the lower grades where they prepare mm -hmm. them for it. Mm -hmm. and, and that's a sad state of fear. That has to be changed. That has to be addressed. That has to be reversed. That's true. Yes. Uh, the, the hardest part oh, so with this a, particular the right project. Direction. Yes, it is. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, the hardest part with this particular project and, and the hands on work will also come is going out to get the student. Okay. Right. Well, how, how do we do that? We have over 100 campuses in New Jersey. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the campus is the ideal place to go and get the student. So if you want students, that's where you got to go. Um, so, so therefore, um, by doing this, uh, you can actually advertise on multiple campuses and, and pass that information. If you get one student from one campus, one from another, that's fine. You don't have to worry about making 10 or 15 students on one campus True. To, to make a group, which is very difficult, especially if you're if you're trying to form a conservative group on campus and you need a sponsor. Mm. To find a sponsor on campus is hard, yes. So, especially in New Jersey, and I'm going to pick on New Jersey for this, mm -hmm. because I've had more success elsewhere in the country. Mm. Right. Okay, yeah. New Jersey is not a tea party state. No, it's not. No. <laughs> <laughs> Very obvious. Uh, right. And the campuses are, uh, I would say, more liberal than even elsewhere in the country. Except maybe New York. Well, except, it's, yes, except New York. New but, York. But I'll tell you something. New Jersey it just stands out. To me, it's like one giant suburb of New York. And um, the, the issue with New Jersey that I don't find elsewhere in the country is the unions. And I'm going to mention mm. that. Because the, the unions control a lot of the education here in New Jersey. Yeah, yeah. Definitely, yeah. And New Jersey is the only one that has the Abbott districts. And uh, if you guys know what the Abbott districts are, they, it's a, they, take, they, they have a formula. They calculate this formula and they spread it across the entire uh, state of New Jersey. Mm -hmm. And certain districts, if you're considered needy, are entitled to funding. And they get that funding from the taxes from people in other districts. Socialism right there. Take away from one and give to something That's else. That's right. Right. So they don't... And the courts, the they, Jersey they, courts, courts approve that. that. Yes, they do. They don't have this anywhere else in the country other than New Jersey. And that strengthens the unions as well. And the unions, you talk about socialists, their whole, uh, their whole caricature, caricature is based upon socialism. Yes, it is. is. Yeah. And so, so well, that's I think initially when the unions, uh, you know, the waterfront, way back when, initially they were trying to do the right thing, maybe in, in the early 20th century, maybe even 19th century, late 19th century, when there were such hard working conditions. And, and children, young children, you know, forced yeah. work. Initially, I think that the idea was was a good idea, it was. but it, it just was. morphed into uh, a, a big cesspool of corruption. Yeah. Power yes. of corruption. Yeah. What that's what you have here here in New Jersey. Yeah. And the two big biggest unions in New Jersey are the NJEA, that's the teachers union, and the AAUP, which is the Collegiate Professors Union. So associated. They're not associated, but they collaborate. Mm -hmm. And so with them in control of your schools and your colleges, they control the philosophy as well as what is being taught your kid. It's true. This is where the, the curriculum comes. Now how how or who is going to be over the oversight for this particular course for students? So you get uh, uh, 100 students, one from each college uh, that's in the state of New Jersey, and they're going to sign on to this. Who's the oversight for 
for the work, the homework, the, the, the reading, the, the length of the course? Is it going to be a full semester, a half semester? You know, how is that going to work? Uh, it's going to be per semester. It's going to be a, right, a full course. semester. Of course, yes. Full course. Okay, and um, the only one right now in our group who can grade the papers is myself because I'm a certified teacher mm -hmm, and, right. and I'm up there. Um, so, I, I mean, I'll be looking at the papers and, and whatnot. Um, but the, the issue is is developing the internship. Okay. okay. That's step number one. Mm -hmm. Before we have to get around that hurdle. And um, I mentioned a couple of you before that the best way to attract a student is through an internship because you're, you're offering them something. Mm -hmm. um, and prior to the Affordable Health Care Act, or Unaffordable Health Care Act, what you call it, um, it's more like it. you, were allowed yeah, right. to, you were allowed to develop an internship whereby the student took a class for credit but they didn't have to pay. Okay, not so anymore. Under the new Affordable Health Care Act, now, people offering internships have to pay the intern as well. What does it have to do with health care? It has nothing to do with it. I know. I, exactly that and, and a zillion other things in the, yeah. the 22, 2300 page. It's just a, a way of saying that people like us, now you have to come up with the money. Yeah, for an intern. Yes. Otherwise, it's too bad. I, I, I mean, is there a price on this internship? Is there a minimum, maximum, uh, open? You no, know, you, you at least have to offer a minimum wage. Mm -hmm. So, uh, How do you translate minimum wage to credit hours? Well, it's what the college charges uh -huh. per class, okay? And now, uh, if you're on a state university mm -hmm. in, uh, in New Jersey, uh, take, for example, William Patterson. Okay, one course over there is, is about two thousand dollars. So for that semester, that's what you will have to pay the intern two thousand dollars for the hours billed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you can offer. You don't have to. But the other way of doing this is offering a scholarship. Okay. 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 Which is probably the better way to go because a scholarship you can also for full or part of the course or various degrees of it so you don't have to pay the two thousand dollars you can you can offer partial credit seven hundred they won't get the three credits for the course so maybe get a credit in half or two credits mm -hmm. so, if someone else picks something up can they um I mean, if someone else has what am I trying to say? You said that they can get credit for that. Mm -hmm. You could write a course. Uh -huh. see, see, the average course is three credits. Okay? Three credits, right. And and the average price is about $700 a credit. Okay. okay. So All right. you can offer credit. You can you can say this will be two credits. Okay. okay. Then, you know, then they get like a, a partial. It would be like a scholarship because you also have to pay them the fourteen hundred. That's under the new law. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, really, I mean, that doesn't make sense for healthcare to be involved in that. Mm -hmm. it, it, it really is disgusting. It's so far a reaching, outreaching. Anything we've ever known in our lives, never before, right? And it just—I—I I, I don't know how many you know people will be watching this, but we just find it. I find it so offensive to be told what type of health care I have to pick, mm -hmm. or be thrown mm -hmm. on an exchange when I can't talk to my doctor as to and what. And be fined if you don't. Yeah. This is so un-American. Un this is just so un-American. Unconstitutional. It, 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 it is. Un I, and I don't even, even know why this, these things are not being challenged. You know, the Supreme Court decided with, with Obama because they said that it was a tax, but initially they were promoting it yeah. as not a tax. 
But now you're being fined on top if you don't do something. You know, it it we just find I find it very offensive. I find it extremely, extremely offensive. When what does health care have to do with birth control? We have the Department of Health. I know people throughout all of the ages, right there in Harlem, if they couldn't afford birth control, go to the Department of Health. Or even Planned Parenthood. Planned Parenthood. Free, free birth Particularly control. Particularly right there, you know, the Department of Health. Now all of a sudden, birth control is included in this health care bill. I mean, they're taking the responsibility of men just throwing it away. Mm -hmm. The man has no responsibility yeah. for anything. The taxpayer just has all of these loads off their back mm -hmm. while they're trying to take care of their families. And our children they're being taxed, taxed, taxed. Yeah. Tax. Our children have to Very pay children. for it. We have to pay for it. When I go to the store and I see the prices going up, 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 mm -hmm. I say, well, we're taking care of somebody having sex and using birth control. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying to myself when I'm buying groceries. Mm -hmm. Well, you you see, um, the reports have been that I've been seeing in the last oh. week, what they're promoting is we're in order for this health care, unaffordable health care to work. Unaffordable, is right. For the young to sign up for it now. Um, That's good and it, work. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, I mean, when when I was 20 really years sick. old, if I was oh. sick, I went to the emergency room, and at the t time when I when I turned like 23 and got a job, then I was covered by my employer from right. my employer. I mean, to to have somebody else decide on what's good for me or what medicines I can and cannot take when I have a cold or the flu is just it's bizarre. It's outrageous. Um, Absolutely. And and you could get we I got insurance by my employer also. That's being eliminated. Mm -hmm. Look at how many people are being reduced to part time, part -time. so the employer doesn't have to deal with that. Mm -hmm. This is a catastrophe. Mm -hmm. it, that, that, that's all going to be a national catastrophe. For this thing to have been passed behind those closed, transparent doors. By all Democrats, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, with not one Republican vote and, and for it. Now you can't even find it because the website doesn't even work. It doesn't even work. Millions right. of dollars just down the tubes. I think it's Michelle's friend yeah. Yeah. who was hired. Yeah. I mean, we have Chicago politics in the White House. Thuggery. I, yeah, That's only thuggery. thuggery. Mm -hmm. Corruption, thuggery, don't give a kick about the people, less vacation and party. Yeah. Right. Meanwhile, right. you have to go and buy, uh, buy a Dutch cleanser that used to be three ninety nine. Now it's over five dollars. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So do my little pots. And I find it very offensive. Um, I many people may not have experienced this, but um, possibly selling your home, your parents or neighbor or anybody, they're going to have to pay a three percent tax. Yes. On top That's of the health care bill, to, the health health health. To, to support the health care bill that yes. they think yes. is so affordable yes. for you. Yeah. And all the you young people that will have to sign up in order to take care of the people who are over 40, uh, 50 and 60 and 70 and on. And um, so that's, that's definitely a tax uh, on people who really don't need um, to, be any, to be taxed anymore. You know what was so sad about it? They said that there was a lot of abuse, misuse, and fraud with our old healthcare system. When you have something like that, or when you have humans involved, you're always going to have someone who's not ethical. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In every system, yeah. at every level. What was wrong with fixing what we had? No, we had to pass. They had to pass this law. Now tell me. What can a, it? What can humans be involved with that's not going to? That then it's going to be perfect. Nothing. Mm -hmm. Even right. with this Obamacare, you're going to have misuse. You're going to have abuse. You're going to have corruption, and you're going to have fraud because humans are not perfect. Right. So why didn't we fix? Right. What we had? No, we were sold a lie. Some people were sold a lie because 60 percent of the Americans didn't want yeah. their right. health care touched. Yeah. Right. Some people were sold alive, bought into the lie, talking about 40 million. Mm -hmm. Where are they? Now we have more people going on Medicaid, which is going to cost taxpayers more money. Mm -hmm. 
This is insane. It's also going to reduce businesses as well. Yes. Uh, not just employment within the businesses, yes. but there's, there's going to be uh, businesses that aren't going to grow to that 50 no. plus employee. That's limit. right. Uh, that if you have 50 or more employees, then you have to follow the, the regulations. They're going it, to, it's going to eliminate business growth. Prosperity. Like Socialism. Yeah, Socialists don't even believe in free markets and capitalism anyway. Right. They want to control everything. And look at the exemptions. Look at the waivers. And then from what oh, I understand, yeah. Harry How many waivers secured one for his Nevada. Yeah. Complete, yeah. Tell, Tell me that's not fraud. Tell me when do the employees get to make a policy that they don't even have to abide by, but the employer is told by the employee what you have to do, what you can't do. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Crazy. Right. And so now we have this passed, as you know, that our legislators didn't even read the bill. Most of them, 90% of them, did not read it. Mm -hmm. And now this is one of the things that's in the bill, and we don't even know what else is in the bill. We don't know what's going on. I mean, what you said today, that shocked me. And in the bill, you have to pay interns a salary. Mm -hmm. That's why I could, can't even understand, and I haven't gotten over the recent elections. My, my question with this uh, is, is now, see, that kind of hinders the, the college student in a way because when, when they want to intern for an employer, they're not going to know if they like it there. Right. Or vice versa, because the employer won't be taking on the many interns anymore. So they're not going to be exposed to the, the opportunity. It doesn't motivate either, either side. Right. Why bother you have to do a payroll? Right. So so what this does, see, see, I personally believe that the older generation in this country is lost. So we yeah. have to go after the younger generation yes. mm -hmm. very much because you know they're the future, and we have to break through this cycle. It's a cycle, and plant the other yes. way of thinking in their minds. Doreen, I totally agree with you. They are lost because have to start pre the, these, <laughs> these <laughs> recent elections really make me believe what you're yeah. saying. Mm -hmm. How in the world can you vote for someone? who will support Obamacare with all of the hindrances, the problems that you already see. And the <laughs> elections just proved to me how old the generation that you are having. Most of them are gone. Um, we do have to start so, with the babies. And even sweet so. <laughs> yes, yes. yes. probably are the ones that might have a, a break better chance. That's right, a breaking through. Yeah. Right. Folks, um, yes. uh, we're running out of time, okay, yes. and uh, the I want first to, book that we'll be reading. Yes, the first book that we'll, we'll be reading, by the way, before we uh, end, uh, we're going to start in January, is Near Pentecost, correct? Correct. Okay, we don't have a date yet, but look on our website, campusteaparties.com. That's campusteaparties.com. We'll be posting the information up there shortly. Um, and also, I want to mention to you that um, uh, tomorrow we have another show called The Lunch Pail and the Professor. Uh, to watch it on Google Plus, just go to, to Google Plus Liberty Action Network. It's with comedian Jim Gasco, Dr. Al Freck, uh, and sit and watch how many times Jim interrupts Al when he gets through the segment. <laughs> um, but thank you for watching us today. And again, for more information, go to campusteaparties.com. That's campusteaparties.com. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And have a Thank you. Yes. All right. Before I catch that title.